Puss in Boots There once lived an old miller who had three sons. One day he called his sons to him and told them that he had decided to give them all that he had. The miller left his mill to his eldest son, his donkey to his second son, and to his youngest son he left his cat. The youngest son grumbled as he walked away. My brothers got valuable things, and all I got was this useless cat. Master, purred the cat, I'm not useless. Just give me a sack and a pair of boots, and you'll soon see how useful I can be. The young man thought that this would be a waste of money, but he agreed to give the cat what he asked for. The cat put on the boots, took the sack, and went to the woods. He put fresh leaves in the sack, left it open, and hid behind a bush. Soon a rabbit came out and hopped into the sack to eat the leaves. The cat leaped out and grabbed the sack. Slinging it over his shoulder, he then marched off to the king's palace. The cat bowed low before the king and said, "'Your Majesty, I bring you a gift from my master, the Marquis de Carabas.' The king was very pleased at this. Each day for a whole week the cat caught something to take to the king, and each time he bowed and said, A gift from the Marquis de Carabas, your majesty. And the king was delighted. One morning, when the cat knew that the king was out driving in his carriage with his beautiful daughter, he ordered the miller's son to take off his clothes and to jump into the water. "'When you hear the carriage, shout and splash as if you were drowning,' the cat said. The miller's son did as he was told. When the king's carriage came near the lake, the cat ran up to it, shouting, "'Help! Help! My master, the Marquis de Carabas, is drowning!' The king stopped the carriage and ordered his servants to save the man in the water. When the miller's son was safely back on the bank, wrapped in a cloak, the cat said, "'Your Majesty, thieves have stolen the Marquis de Carabas's clothes.' The king immediately sent his servants to the palace to get splendid new clothes. The miller's son put them on, and he looked most handsome. The princess herself was quite impressed. "'You must ride in my carriage,' said the king. "'We'll drive you to your home.' While the miller's son settled himself in the carriage, the cat ran on ahead and told all the farmers on the road, "'The king is coming. When he asks who owns this land, please say it belongs to the Marquis de Carabas.' The farmers all agreed. As the carriage reached the fields, the king called out, "'Who owns this land?' and the farmers did as the cat had requested. "'The Marquis de Carabas,' they replied, and the king was astounded. The cat ran on until he came to a magnificent castle. In it lived a fearsome and magical ogre. The cat pushed open the door and strode in. "'What do you want?' growled the ogre. The cat purred. "'I've been told that you can turn yourself into any animal you like.' but I don't believe it. At once the ogre turned himself into a huge lion and said, Now do you believe? And the cat calmly said, That's very impressive, but I bet you can't transform yourself into something really small, such as a mouse. As the ogre transformed himself into a mouse, the cat quickly leaped on and ate him just as the king's carriage arrived at the castle's door. The cat received the king at the door. He bowed and mewed. Welcome to the castle of the Marquis de Carabas. Please come in. The king gazed awestruck at the castle and all the land and farms around it. The Marquis de Carabas must be very rich. I believe he would make an excellent husband for my daughter. Now, Quite used to being the Marquis de Carabas, the miller's son and the princess were soon married, and they lived happily ever after in the castle. As for the cat, he also lived with them in the castle, and never had to chase a mouse again. The End